Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm your host, Tony, and... What is hard for games? It's been... <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> even time. know what this is. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to have you here with me because honestly, it's been really lonesome. I've, I've done a couple of videos with John, but like aside from that, it's been very lonesome covering these by myself. Like it, 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 the social aspect for me has been like stripped away. Yeah, and um, I, I don't have any equipment or anything, so I haven't been really doing anything with it through, yeah. the, through the pandemic. So this is... You know, this might be, this might get a little rough. <laughs> Today, we are covering a brand spanking new modern Game Boy title called DeMeo's Jukebox. And it was sent to us free of charge, full disclaimer here, but I will get into this in a minute, but uh, functionally, it's kind of an album, a music album on a Game Boy cartridge. So let's go ahead and go into what the heck this is and, and give it a, uh, a fair shake of a review. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Canadian musician Rob DeMeo is the creator of basically everything mm -hmm. in this game, except for some collaboration on the art, I think. Yeah, there's a little bit of sprite work, and then also his sister is the author of one of the tracks on it as well. Then he sort of Game boy -tized <laughs> it and chiptunized it and put it put it mm -hmm. in there as well. But basically, all, all of the tunes in the jukebox of this mm. are chiptune versions of real songs from either, in the case of the one tune you just mentioned, the artist's sister, and in most cases, Rob DeMeo's music himself. Yeah. So basically, he had a passion for creating music and also a passion for gaming, and functionally, he just combined them. And, and realistically, he, I don't know if this was his initial intention or not, but he found a different audience for his music, right? So if someone had contacted me and said, hey, listen to my album, just because of the number of emails we get, there's a high probability I would not have listened to that album, just if, even if it was good. Almost, right. almost 100%. <laughs> yeah, but if someone contacts me and says, hey, I put my album on a Game Boy cartridge, suddenly there's an extreme novelty there. Um, then that definitely piqued my interest, obviously, because we continued our conversation with him. Now, at the time of them initially marketing this, they had said it was the first physical Game Boy release in over 20 years. Uh, so if you go to their site, that's what it will say. But unfortunately, that's not true. There were a couple of indie titles that actually beat them to the punch this year. Oh. Uh, which stinks for them. But alas, regardless, it's still an accomplishment to get it mm -hmm. physically uh, released. Yeah, and I, right. I saw you... Pulled it out to show me a couple things before mm. we started shooting. It was working on Game Boy hardware. Yeah, it functions 100% fine. I. <laughs> so before we get into the actual gameplay, we should talk about the uh, art and, and packaging for the, the physical release. Now, you can also purchase a digital release as, as well, which is a lot cheaper, and we'll, we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, the physical release, the box is of very high quality, and the art is real nice. It's him stepping through this, these portals, getting into the jukebox. And it's actually funny because there's a stark contrast between the actual game and this, because the game, you know, by no fault of its own, it's a Game Boy game, it's black and white, functionally, but the cover- Green and black. Green Tony. and black, yeah. <laughs> it, the, the cover is like, like candy for the eyes. Like it's very like vibrant it's, it's and very neon. well done. And it's, yeah. it's very reminiscent of the packaging for games back in the day on the Game Boy, like your mm -hmm. Tetrises and, uh, uh, other Game Boy games? No, it was only Tetris <laughs> that was ever released on the Game Boy. You and I both know that. It also comes with a little bit of artwork inside as well. And it's it's anime-ized Rob mm. DeMeo. You know, he chip-tuned his music and he anime-ized himself. Yep. And, you know, that's good-looking gentleman. I, I, yeah, I mentioned that the, the artwork was very stunning, and uh, I must say that what I don't know what he actually looks like in real life or not, uh, but he is definitely, according to this, real husbando material. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there, you know, if anyone's looking for yeah, a husbando. So for the one lady that watches Hard for Games, <laughs> you know... Hey, give, give know, Rob a call yeah, if you're exactly, in the exactly. Canada area. Uh, there's also another poster here as well that includes Rob and the story, credits, um, you know, information regarding the soundtrack. 
Uh, I should also mention the story. Uh, after a long and stormy night, Rob DeMeo woke up realizing that all of his music from his collection was stolen. With some investigating, he found out that his records were trapped in jukeboxes scattered across the galaxy. And of course, oh, he damn. has to go on and, and retrieve them. So gameplay here is is functionally maze and labyrinth style gameplay, punctuated by what is functionally Zelda style block box or tile puzzles where you have mostly gems in this game. Yeah, gems where basically you, you take a gem and you have to move this way and that way and you can't move in a diagonal. It can only move horizontally or vertically. And it uh, looks like I just sort of, you know, blessed <laughs> all of you. Functionally, you know, you, you just have to get the gem to the, the point and then it gets harder and harder and harder as it goes. And of course, you get to unlock these tracks in addition to listen to great level tracks. But how do we feel it all kind of came together as a game versus kind of coming together as an album? You know, I, I definitely felt that the puzzles were kind of basic. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's tough in a game with just five levels. Yeah. You want to give some sort of progression, so you have to start with the basics somewhere. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also felt by the end of the game that I was getting sick of the same... Mm -hmm. gem puzzle every time yeah I, want, I wanted something fresh yeah so like a lot of the labyrinth and maze stages feel like you're just looking for like an invisible door or an invisible exit or, or something to that effect where it feels much more random than it should right and there were times where i was just sort of like I'm gonna just keep walking until I find the and hidden then found, hole. It was just a lot of it. A lot of finding the end was just totally, yeah, totally by chance. And then, but there are like hint boards that pop up, and sometimes will give you like right on the nose exactly what you have to do. Yeah. Too. And then sometimes there are hint boards that are like, oh well, you know, this one's a little bit tricky. And then you're like, well, what the? And then you just <laughs> then you just like walk into a wall at random, you know. So it it, it felt a little bit like. Um, the game was trying to be tricky when really in some points it felt like it was someone's first game and it was someone's first game you know so like it, it is what it is in, in that respect but it isn't his first album or his first musical outing so the music despite the gameplay being very simplistic the music really kept me going through it and kept me interested yeah and i i enjoyed the music too you know the the jukebox tracks are pretty clearly chip-tuned, real, live rock music yeah. that's just been adapted for Game Boy, and it, it comes across well. I felt like there should have been other types of puzzles other than just the gem puzzles. I felt like there, there should have been like, you know, maybe one or two of those were that and then it switched it up to something totally different because I, I, like I was torn. Like sometimes I was like, ah, oh, one of these again. And then other times I was like, oh, well, this one's tricky. Like this one was really like grabbing my attention. I can't figure it out. Uh -huh. And eventually I did. So I, I kind of went went back and forth on it. And uh, some of the footage that you're seeing is captured on the Game Boy Advance player for the GameCube. Some of its emulation, the real the reason why some of its emulation is because uh, there is no password or save feature in this. Now, having no password or save feature probably will not be an issue for the like 99% of people uh, because the game's only about a half hour long, realistically, half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. But for me, that's like constantly torn away by kids. Like I, I'd like to be able to like do a, like a, a quick save or something like that, and, like come back. So I played about halfway through the game and then it was time for me and my wife to hang out because we barely get any time together. Then I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> like I need to stop. There goes so, my life. But it wasn't that hard to get back to that point where I was at because it was, it was, it's a very, it's a short title, right. basically. So let's talk a little bit about the value proposition. Now, one thing that Rob wanted me to mention was that uh, when you go to the site, take a look at the prices, it's in Canadian money and apparently compared to the US, the currency exchange is in our favor at the moment. So it's about, he said like- I mean, the Donald Trump economy, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
not for much longer. Uh, but yeah, so basically it's it's $69.99 Canadian plus shipping for the physical version of the game, which comes out to be a, about $48 plus shipping US. And then there's a $15 uh, digital version, and both of them are released with a digital soundtrack. So what do you, what do you think about that value proposition? It, it's probably not something I would purchase myself, but I don't know that I'm the audience for retro physical re-releases because I'm I'm pretty solidly on the emulation bandwagon. So I I, I just play things on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like the artwork is well done. I, yeah. I enjoyed the music an awful lot, but I would I would probably be a digital yeah. purchaser. For a little less than fifteen bucks US you get some great chip tune tracks. You know, it, I think it makes a lot of sense. The physical, I think you, it, it's much more niche. I, I think it's a little bit harder to justify at that near $50 USD mark. It's hard just mentally to say, okay, I'm getting an album, but I'm also getting a half hour or 40 minutes of gameplay, you know? Uh, but you're paying for probably like 10, 20 hours of... Yeah. Gameplay would be, because, I mean, that's a retail release, basically. Yeah, that's like a AAA retail release. If you like nice art and Husbando posters, which, of course, we do, um, <laughs> and, like, having something physical and supporting an artist, because, you know, like, with a small run like this, he's not making a huge margin. I, I don't really know for sure, but I would imagine. So probably it has to be priced around that price point to make profit, etc. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody for watching the episode today. And big thank you to Rob for sending this over to us for us to review. Really appreciate it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description below if you're interested in pre-ordering it. Pre-ordering ends in like a couple of weeks, uh, early December, so you won't have to wait long if you if you decide to <laughs> step into the jukebox, as they say in their trailer. So thank you again, everybody. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you all next time. Uh,